Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Welcome to The Mike O'Mara Show, enjoying our second decade of the show that's become a daily routine for thousands of listeners in great places like Boone, North Carolina, Boone. where uh, Rob was uh, yes. with a great mushroom motel. Uh, <laughs> Needles Highway, South Dakota. I still can't get over that. Needles Highway, South Dakota. If you haven't heard that episode, you'll want to tune in. Yeah, it's from Monday's a, a episode. Day or two and ago. I think that's my favorite Rolling Stones LP, Mushroom Motel. Mushroom Motel. I still, well, we'll get to it. All right. Gardner, Montana, Tim Pocky, Crete. Uh, Sedona, Arizona, and the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Wow. That's a, you know, that's a part of the world where, um, you know, you, you get to be my age and you begin to realize that uh, there are certain parts of the world you will never see. Well, I don't know about because that. Because, well, my bucket list is massive. What and, if you do, what if not, you got invited to do another charity event for Bangladesh? And you were brought out there. The concert, you mean? Yeah, yeah exactly. Years yeah. <laughs> Tears for Bangladesh. That's yeah. a, you're too young to even remember that. To My pull friend that. came to me, <laughs> sadness in his eyes. <laughs> Rob, uh, Oscar, do you know the concert for Bangladesh? No, no. I didn't a, even know that it was a relevant it was the, situation. It was just, this is before We Are the World. Oh, it's old. This is before Live Aid. What about Bras Across America? This is before Bros. Bros Across America. This was the first time that uh, rock and roll musicians got together and uh, decided to... Can you turn the music Yeah, uh-huh. Jesus Christ. Uh, this is before the idea of, um, you know, doing rock concerts. Uh, is this a live one right here? No, this is the, uh, the single. George Harrison, it was his first, I think his first big project after the Beatles broke For up. Bangladesh? Yeah, he wanted to organize, because I, I think Ravi Shankar comes from Bangladesh. I wish somebody was into Bolivia. And uh, We could use the help. He was a very famous sitar player. I might be bangling the details, but as I remember it, he explained to him how bad it was in Bangladesh, and George did a huge benefit concert at Madison Square Garden. I have a friend from Bangladesh. He made no impact. Okay. It's still terrible there. Well, I mean, think how bad it could be. <laughs> I have a horrible joke, but I'm not going to share Don't it. Don't do it. I, I have a friend from Bangladesh. <laughs> he was always hungry. That's I don't think terrible. it's terrible. Was it starving Marvin? I don't think it's famine there. No, there well, What's the, that? It's quality of life. Well, the problems in Bangladesh, Mike, are multifold. Multifold. Is that Fold. where the jewelry comes from? Which Bangles? One? Yes. No, the band came from there. Oh. Walk like an Egyptian. Makes what sense. is something I now now this is I know what kind of show this is gonna be already because we are so stream of consciousness right now. Because sometimes we need to do that. It's yep. just fun. Oscar, somebody on social media posted something about why doesn't Oscar celebrate some weird thing they oh, do. Oh, I saw in it. It was Bolivia. the day of the sea. Oh, good, day of the sea in a landlocked yep. country. The day of the sea. I what, celebrate tell, it tell every day that. at my house. All the time. <laughs> Yeah. That's not. That's not nice. No, you know it's S E A, not, not the nice letter C, right? Just so as you they know, they really have something called the Day of the Sea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Bolivia is a land of losers. That's why I left. Um, <laughs> that's likes, terrible to <laughs> say about an entire country. <laughs> he likes winners. <laughs> yeah. I came to the USA number one. <laughs> right. Um, I saw. I saw the signs, and I said, "We got to go, Dad. Let's make it happen." Um, no. Yeah, I, a lot of people don't realize when. Uh, <laughs> Oscar's family emigrated to uh, the United States. That uh, the uh, the whole idea was Oscar's as a small child, yeah. as a child of six. Yeah. His first words was was go to Olney. Yeah. His first words were it were I know I got excited. It, I'm sorry. It was wow. It was if you if you could flash back to coming to America one the OG original. Yes. It right? was where are we going to go for a new life? And I spun Give me a globe. A little of that if you'd like, if you like, please, 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 please. He's the king. <laughs> oh, he's the king. That's, that is my that's my favorite single part of we that guy that just starts it. He's got the deadpan face that he starts saying, He's the king. You know, you, there are parts of that movie that are so good it actually made me enjoy the second. There was like spillover. It was so because it was yeah, fun but to I, but, it, but the, I looked at when I when you take it as a whole. I remember I felt about uh, coming to America one the way I felt about coming to America too. It's not, it's not something where you have a sustained parts wow. are bigger, parts are better than the whole. 
A hundred percent. It has a series of bits. In order to be a smash comedy, Mm -hmm. really, this is the truth uh, for comedy movies. Mm -hmm. Always been my theory on comedy movies. In order to be a smash, you have to, a good comedy will have a series of things you remember that are funny, that stand out. A really good comedy will have more, and a great comedy will have it from the minute the movie starts until the minute the yeah, movie they ends. Almost That's how overlap. difficult it is. They overlap. That's how yeah. difficult it is to write a great comedy. The the one that comes to mind, because it's the most recent one that really did that, although I will give the wrong Missy a little credit with David Spade. That was they, a great they made film. It, they made a valiant effort, but it had a little few moments, but something about Mary would have gag, 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 right through, right through all of it, and then the... Dialogue is just linking yeah. the uh, the problem with coming to America, as I see it, as far as a comedy, way too much of the chat, chat, chat a lot, in our, between. A lot of Arsenio. The, yeah, uh, yeah, way too much Arsenio, and and that's it. That's uh, I don't know where I. You go know, off what, another on that tangent, another great but. comedy is the most recent, uh, The Invisible Man. Was very oh, funny. fantastic. <laughs> With Kate Can Moss? I get back That's to my story? I mean, Elizabeth Moss. <laughs> Elizabeth the Kate love Moss. of God, please. All of the Mosses. So, what are you saying you, about the day of the uh, sea? So, I remember my father saying, point of where like where you want to go. Like, where should we go for our new life, a new world? And what was he having you point at? Well, this is the thing. Remember, they would. I was left-handed, so they would <laughs> tie my hand behind my back in Bolivia. Right, to train you. To make me right-handed, because... They had these old these these uh, witchcraft to yeah, they, yeah. So they, that's not exclusive to uh, Bolivia. The Irish, uh, the old Irish. I was referred to uh, by the Gaelic word "cathog." Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know how it's spelled, but it's some evil term about uh, left-handers that my uh, that my grandfather's sister referred to me as "cathog." Enough ah. that you would be like less than welcome at an event, or was she just, just joking? Sh- no, she was. She was the sweetest. Uh, she was Aunt Kitty. Meow. Mm. And oh. uh, Aunt Kitty was. Here's the difference I remember. All right, when you went to my father's uh, mother's relatives on that side, right? It the the rules were totally different. Don't touch this. Don't touch this. I need. I need. I need. It was my first real experiences with uh, givers and takers. Okay, and they were takers. They had been taken care of for all their. My my cousin Teddy's hysterical when he talks about it. <laughs> when he talks about them squandering the family fortune, it's hysterical. Really, when you get him going is, on the fact that he... they were they literally. They, but this is the truth as I remember it. They literally did not work one day in their lives in their lives and there was no marriage so think about that for a second right? like that's Mike, the way these like ladies gray live. gardens <laughs> it, it was kind of that, that but but the house the pay, wasn't falling the apart the payoff but. was you know they helped all of their family members go to college and they took care of them they were oh, wonderful no, people no 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 oh no. no. that must you be got the, other the wrong side. generation oh my oh. my father's sister mm-hmm. paid for seven Seven kids, oh, half of their wow. college education. Wow. Seven, five on my uh, uncle's side, wow. and my my father uh, Kathy and I. So That's they just what, they uh, squandered the fortune on themselves. They it's sustaining themselves. They had yeah. servants, and oh uh, they lived in they lived in uh, they had people that uh, cooked and cleaned for them uh, in New Haven, Connecticut, and they had people who cooked and cleaned for them life. in Maine. You know, and, I always and, say and it was all the time. I always say that um, you can't uh, what you can't take it with you. They did. They they took every every time. <laughs> yeah, they did their the, very, their level so best <laughs> on my father's father's side. If I'm not mistaken, Jeez. God, this is what you try to keep it alive, I folks. Love if this. you have a big family, because you kind of try to remember sure. was Aunt Kitty, and she had a career. As a school teacher. Mm. And I remember she lived in uh, New Haven, Connecticut as well. And we would only occasionally visit her. But I remember at the end of her life, uh, towards the end of her life, my mom brought her into our home and we took care of her uh, because she didn't have any. That was the and way I, it was remember, back then. That you no, take but the- it, was, it was kind of the way it was, Rob. But I remember the reason for that was my mom absolutely loved her because she was the kindest of all of them. Uh, to my mom when she came into the family. So Kitty and, didn't. And, uh, she did no squander. Kitty didn't squander. She didn't squander because she had a career, but she had her own little house okay. and she had knickknacks. These wonderful little things on shelves yeah. everywhere. And we'd come home and we're, you know, we'd come over to her house and I'm five, six, seven years old. And I tell her, Mike, Mike, don't touch. My mom was used to being at the other house, mm-hmm. and and she'd say, don't, 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 don't touch. And my aunt Kitty would say, they're just things. 
He can touch anything he wants. So what if yeah. one of them breaks? That, that was, but she'd also been a school teacher, so she knew about uh, kids. But she never married herself. We were so not. Uh, just, uh, we weird. were not allowed to touch the Hummels at me mom's house. Did you have Hummels? My my dad's mother had a tremendous Hummel collection, and, and they were and they and she was a she was a thing person. And so she, don't don't, them, don't right. touch that. There was not a lot of fun. Well, they're had, pretty valuable, aren't they? Well, uh, you'd like to think so, but they didn't turn right. out to be all that great. I remember one time at the other aunt's house, uh, there was a tiny penguin that I played with. And Living? then later, uh, no, a penguin, a, a ceramic penguin. Oh, okay, not a live penguin. And then later in the day, one of the aunts had noticed that I turned the penguin to the north, and she came in and she hobbled me. <laughs> <laughs> she hobbled me. That's a little misery, misery said, reference that they had. Mike, do you know which way penguins face in, in nature? <laughs> <laughs> it's called right. North, Mike. They face to the north. So back to the day of the so city. I of tried the city. To, old enough to remember. Yes, it. I remember with my right hand, which I was just learning how to use. And you probably were awkward I, with it. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to point to Washington D.C., mm-hmm. but I didn't have my motor skills, so I landed on I landed on Silver Spring, Maryland, which then took us to Olney. Very close. You know, the so you were doing shtick, yes. and I was asking a serious question yeah. about <laughs> this festival. Uh, I didn't realize that when you led your family as a uh, as a single digit child to uh, to the United States, you, la- you landed in Silver Spring. Uh, uh, my, the uh, port, beautiful. Mike. The port of yeah. Silver Spring. Still no right. water there. Um, mm-hmm. The it's a sad story. And and for new listeners, hello. I'm from Bolivia. This is why I'm slandering my mother country. I'm a citizen of this country. The USA, go USA. I always say um, is now my country. But I can slander the other country without any retribution or cancellation from the audience because I'm from there. I was born there. Well, it's like uh, Rob and I can make fat jokes all day Correct. long. Yeah, and, I can make, and I can make Irish jokes Just all day long. Just wanted to clarify that. Now, By the way, when you talk about stereotypes, the Irish drinking stereotypes, not true. No. Not. <laughs> I always like to say that. It's not true, not. Yeah. So, and also the Polish, Mike, are very smart people. Uh, when the Bolivian people... <laughs> lost multiple waterways in multiple wars i think we're, we're zero and ten for wars uh we would go to war with people and then they would beat us and then we say we'll get you next time and we never got them next time mike they're like the new york giants of south american countries yes, yes. the current new york giants yeah. i have to ask this did you have uh what was the major river that was uh going through bolivia? growing up the only waterway i know i knew and i know now that belongs to bolivia and only half of it does is lake titicaca Titicaca. That's a good massive one. Yes. body of water. Yes. And are there homes there on uh, on the lake on Lake uh, Tai Tai Kaka? The, well, I, as <laughs> I've been to late uh, to the Lake Titicaca multiple times, um, there are homes and quote unquote resorts, but it is not the type of resorts you see in North America. Um, you'll see a home every I would say sixty kilometers. Nothing crazy. Okay. Uh, here or there, or a restaurant, right? Right. They have great trout. I remember that as a child. Uh, but is uh, does Peru border Lake uh, Tai Tai Kaka? They too? share ownership of the lake, and I have taken uh, a ferry from Bolivia to Peru. How is the ownership? Do they like get it every other weekend in Christmas? No, no. I think that each of them say this is what our where our borderline is. Oh, I understand. And like Madonna. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like uh, the Rio Grande. Yes, half exactly. and half. Right, right. Um, but. Uh, the sad part is this, is at one point, Bolivia did have a coastline, and then they went to war, and they lost. And then they had another coastline, and they went to war, and then they lost. I think it's a total of five or six wars with, with uh, various countries, and that was that. So they celebrate the loss, <laughs> or the L's, as the kids like to say, with a wonderful day of the sea. When you remember the days where we had access to the sea and tried to take... Well, what country would you have to go through now to get to the sea? Peru? Or Brazil. You or know, Brazil. Mike, this is fascinating. Yeah. I'm looking at this. What they called the coastline when Brazil had a coastline mm-hmm. is the littoral department. L-I-T-O-R-A-L. Yeah. Literal. Literal. Littering and... I'm looking right now and then, uh, with the sea. for sale. Yeah, yeah. House in uh, La Paz, yeah. in Bolivia. Uh, $140,000, not a giveaway by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. No. And I'm looking at but this. But not uh, really uh, appreciating, if you know what I mean. Holding steady. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because they got troubles still, right, in uh, Bolivia? Well, it's a, yeah. it's a you know, communist re- regime. Um, there is, I think for the better part of the last uh, 15 years, there hasn't been a necessarily open democracy there. Um, while they, it's, it's, it's a, a, a pseudo-democracy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, 
some of the my greatest memories are me leaving uh, leaving Bolivia at the airport uh, because it just see even when I was younger I would go there I was like man I can't wait to get back to paved roads. How long since you've been there? Ah, ten years. Will you go back again, do you think? My father's begging me, as he's down there now, because he hates his family, but he wants to save, uh, well, you know. <laughs> that, he has uh, a family he down wants there, to right? see, When he's down there now, and it's a communist country, and he comes from the United States, do they watch him? Do they have people? It's, do they have well, that kind of secret not, police? It's, well, it's not, uh, it, how about this? It's not stamped Venezuela communism, right? Right, okay. It's more it's like not the, Cuba communism. It's not Cuba communism. It's more like, uh, we're going to do what we want when we want, and have... Yeah, somewhat loose elections, and say this is all a okay. So does it lean work it out like anarchy a little bit? Is there is there a looseness to it that there's almost no structure? Or? Oh no, there's a structure. It's, it's close to a dictatorship. Okay, all and right. these look these are my views of coming from a free land like the the states. Yes. Um. So I'm sure that I'm being aggressive and maybe not 100 percent fair. What I do know is that my father is donating his time for the to public health down there and helping okay. them prepare and deal with the current pandemic his specialty mike remains uh curing left-handed people as he said <laughs> as he said if i can't help my country then who can i help i said you can help so he's loyal to his original yeah, i said yeah, can you help uh origin. can you help mom out she's a little lonely at home she got you know? ten, yeah. she got 10 printers yeah, in the she, garage but she isn't is she really she's fine with it isn't she really <sighs> after all these years do you think she she pines for your dad every day do you think or do you this think this is she's what happens on life? sundays We'll throw on Downton Abbey. Once we get to like the fourth storyline, which somehow involves a uh, loveless marriage. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> you know, she'll yeah. be like, she'll turn it into her father or her or my father, like her dad being a certain way because, you know, there's a big patriarch within yeah. Downton right. Abbey. And, or, or, or she'll say, your dad did this to me. And I'm like, mom, don't want to hear about dad. <laughs> okay. This is down okay. Abbey. That's We're, sad. Good. We're good. I feel bad for her. I feel bad for oh, her. Don't That's feel sad. bad for me. I got to sit through six episodes of her yelling about my dad. <laughs> at down the Abbey triggers yeah. it. Dude, yeah. Go figure that. Who yeah. would figure that How out? How many times uh, have you been through the whole episode? Because there's not that many episodes of the oh, whole show. There are. Are you kidding me? There's four seasons of how many? Like six four? seasons. Oh, six? And each season has nine episodes. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> 63. Thank you. Did you watch it, Rob, when it was uh No, around? I have the DVDs to this day, but I haven't oh, watched I it. Oh, I think. It's right I up your alley. I, Are you kidding I, me? I, you dig it. I think you dig you I think it would be would. a great escape. I would have Downton Abbey parties. Abbey. By the way, I start, we started binging uh, Animal Kingdom last night, the uh -huh. polar opposite of Downton Abbey, and I was like, why did I wait so long so to good. binge this this so season? Because it is so right? good. And the new I think it's the more guy good than, than but, it is yeah, for everybody the good, Oscar, good. Because it starts with just, uh, you know, rat-a-tat-tat, -tat, mm -hmm. shoot them up. And I loved every Does second it, of it. Is that the I kind really of show did. that drops one episode a week? The, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, but, you know what? Yeah. It's actually, you benefited from waiting then. Yeah, I can get is a few it, more. Yeah. Is it Skylar? Belt. Is that the new girlfriend that, that just the baby? Uh, baby. You know what? I'm it's not something. sure. You know what I'm talking about, gotten, right? Uh, yeah, but I don't know if I've gotten there yet. I have just gotten done with the whole cousins thing. Cousins. I've just gotten done oh, okay. with those you're just two about to, You're just about to get to it. Okay, so yeah. I've gotten just, is there a new girlfriend? Well, the girlfriend. Is it the girlfriend of the guy with the long hair? Yeah, with yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, with the, they yeah, have a baby yes. together? Smoke show. Oh, yeah. And, and, oh. I, and I'm sitting there and Shannon's like, she probably didn't have a baby. I'm like, no, this is Hollywood. She but probably she, didn't have a baby. Yeah, there are actresses that are attractive all over Hollywood. There are actresses mm. that I would leave uh, my wife for that actress in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, that's nice. That's the second negative wife. Oh, reference I'm sorry. On today's I'm sorry. Show. The first one was a joke. Uh, this one was serious. Thank you. Palette cleanser. This woman, uh, there are sex symbols in Hollywood. There are attractive people in Hollywood. Right. Then there are actresses that just. How would I describe it? They just. Um, they radiate sex appeal like mm -hmm. media. Yeah. I mean, it's just constant. And then like they've they got will, her running will, around, and she's running around in a romper. Yeah, that has, uh, and she's wearing a bra underneath the romper, and she's got one of the uh, shoulder straps, the, the, the little Sleep straps tattoos. Yeah. Sleep tattoos. That, that's that's hanging down. Just amazing. And it's just this, and it's like she's so you know one percent body fat and running around, and she she's very attractive. Is she blonde? It's worth what? Uh, I she's literally said I I let very this Latina, person very Latina, very Latina. Ruin me. I let her ruin me. Oh, yes. Financially. Uh, she's take it everything. Very, take everything. Very Here's bad. Here's my girl. pin number.
Uh, and the and the woman that that plays uh, the young Ellen Barkin is spectacular too. Oh, she's I think very she's attractive. great. Yeah. In the, so, so are the they doing like great. are they doing like a flashback thing where now Ellen Barkin is yeah. younger? Oh, yeah, remember, and this show that. is like equal opportunity. You'll see dudes banging, you'll see women banging, you'll see dudes banging uh, women, and vice versa. Pulls the poles, holds the holes. See, this is how he described you'll get everything. This is how he described Downton Abbey to me. But I don't like the boyfriend that that got out of town. I don't like him. Oh, well, he's so sending her money. I, Spoiler I hope alert. he's not. Oh. I hope he's not on the show anymore. Yeah. Uh, Are well, you so watching it, uh, Murder in Our Apartment yet? Only Murder in Our Apartment, the Martin Short, the, uh, Steve Martin yeah, show yet? Couldn't. No, just didn't do it for me. But oh, nope, you got to stay no. with it. It is so. No, 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 did no. Did you get no, to no, Nathan no. Lane? Just, uh, no, no, didn't get to it. It's too. It's it's just too broad. It's like everything Steve Martin's ever done. No, it's, but it's, it's like everything. Actually, I, I, Martin Short does not save that show. It is the it is so it is getting. I'm, I think I'm on episode six now, and it's gotten to where it's more plot centric, and there is a fascinating plot and the undercurrents of them doing a podcast. I stand by it. I think it's great. They're solving a murder. I mean, it's a murder hey, let mystery me show. Ask you a question. Yeah. Do you ever listen back to the show? Yeah. Do you, do you realize how we just sold this wonderful show of just like sex appeal and action, and then you pivot to your selling of this show? Which one do you think people want to get into? Do you ever listen back to the show? No. <laughs> do you remember the guy that's in this room that's funny? <laughs> Me. <laughs> I'm funny. Sure. All right. I've Let's go with this. that. Walk oh up, my God, walk we're running out of time. As I'm Mike would say, I it. gave it a try, I just couldn't get into it. Moving on. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be able to do this. What? I want to talk about internet addiction. I want to talk about it. It's like we don't have time. We'll do it. Uh, we'll do it tomorrow or the next day. But uh, we're not we'll gonna get live. to it today. We'll do it uh, live. Now, listen. One of the things we do have today, and I want to tease this before we uh, go to our first break here. Rob Spiewak has a nostalgia corner. Even though Rob, I just ha- I beg to differ. If you're somebody that doesn't like sticky. Sort of. I like, wish you, if you would not, stay with it. But I think, no, let but me you know, but there's a, but there's it. enough. I don't want to. I don't want to show that I have to stick with. And you, you're agreeing with me that the first episode or two is just no. It's no. It's, I didn't agree. I said that you would get into it if you stayed with it. I feel you would because it's got oh, a good plot. I don't like to slog through something that's got like sticky. Steve Martin humor uh, and Martin Short uh, doing bad material, which really, if you look at a lot of uh, Martin Short's career, you know, it hasn't been a 10, oh, right? I mean, I it, it has a. No, I'm talking about the choices of his movies. Oh, movies, yeah. But I mean, as yes, far as just this is the, another oh, one of those the, movies. Look at the Steve overall Martin, career. Hold on. Steve Martin, brilliant comedian, right? Martin Short, brilliant comic actor, right. as far as a sketch artist. Probably no one better. Uh, as a talk show guest, spectacular. Yeah, I would say character Steve, work. Character Steve work, yeah. Martin, about half as good on three a talk quarters, show. Three quarters. Probably three. No, think back to the days of Johnny. He was Johnny, a great guest. He, he was great when he was 28. Yeah, true. Uh, but but now it's Still just got like, it. So I watched that, and it's just this. I don't like. If you're going to have a comedy based on murder which which is a formula that is so hack in my opinion that it just gets old really quick where oh they're actors running around and doing this oh we're scared now we're doing that i i like comedy to be based on other stuff All right. i, I really well, I've, do. I've, that's I've, never worked very for much, me it's I've like very murder much on the it. orient express well, that's that kind doesn't, of what it is that doesn't enjoy, no i don't like that but i mean the thing about it it's sticky it's 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 not it, it doesn't. The writing isn't all that good. It's 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 too broad. It's too slapsticky. There's you know a little, what I mean? Well, no slapsticks. Not they're the not word. really they're, in danger. You you know they're not really in danger, and you don't feel any danger because they're too busy being funny well, I men. That, I don't know that you need danger, and I think Selena Gomez is very good in it as well. She's all right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, it's just uh, I watched one episode and I was like rolling my eyes half of it. Um, I was really rolling my eyes. It was that bad. Well, I apologize. As far as I was concerned. I enjoyed I, you it. You don't have to apologize. You have your opinion. <laughs> there are people that are going to agree with you, but you've recommended other things. Knives Out was kind of a murder mystery Yeah, and I thought thing. that was very that excellent. Was, that was funny. And we're going to get, get a that sequel to that. Yeah. I just, I, I'd watch the sequel. All the ingredients seem to add up for me. I don't know. But you know what? It could be narrow casting. Absolutely. Sometimes there's stuff that that just appeals to me, and that's here's the what case. I like. I like my murder here. I like my comedy here, and uh, I, I when they get close to each other, it just doesn't. Uh, maybe it's uh, because I think the world is too nuts a place right now. I want when I want violence in a movie, I want that violence uh, not every time, but most of the time, I want that violence to go. Man, that's pretty horrible. Why don't I'd we sure get together? I sure hate that to happen like, to me. Let's just get yeah, together. No, hold on. Let me finish my point. You're not listening. All right. I, I, when I see violence, and that's the way I want it. Because I think when you see uh, 
other stuff when you when you totally uh make it a comical exercise it just diminishes the fact that you know there's a dead person and all this do you know what i mean do i do i do but the, you know but weird. as they get into it that the death is not diminished because they actually develop the character of why the death happened and how the person that died fit into it and also okay. there is some pretty dead what on what is the name of the show again what is I it only murder in our uh, in our hotel or our apartment. Only murder in our apartment. Do you remember the title of the show? It's a complicated. Like so uh, you know what? Slack off, buddy. Slack it's off. A, it's a really. What did you wait? Your addled. Yeah, you really told Dex him. Beer brain. Pull the number and look down in your computer and grab it. I just. I'm trying to. I'm trying to plug it for you. I think here. it's only murders in this brain. No, <laughs> it's only the thing. It's it's on Hulu and it's a horrible title. That is the one it's thing. It's on Hulu. Good yeah, luck trying to find it. And if you search right. only murder, it will pop up for you. On only Hulu. murders in the building. Only murder in the building. Thank you, Pony. I was Thank close. Thank you, Pony. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Always Pony. nice to have him on my side. Very welcome. <laughs> but what? Wait, you don't help. think he was on your no, side? No, the That's way the he's... fastest he's ever moved. It's true. That's what, what I, I said. He's like, he how can I help my buddy out buddy there? And only in murders, only in, murders in, in the our building. building. And uh, the, there are some very pointed and pretty intrinsically funny comments on podcasting which i find very funny as well because okay. one of the things they're doing is doing a they meet the three main characters meet because they're all fans of true crime podcasts and they start producing a true crime podcast and they have to get it financed and that's how nathan lane gets into it and it's that's pretty funny too so i like that i don't i see you this is the thing off off the air we've talked about the show right yeah. uh -huh. where even then i felt like not not compelling enough for me not compelling enough for me but there are some shows you've brought up in the past that I was like, okay, this is probably good. I can't Only Murders in the Building like, on some. Rotten Tomatoes yes. has a 100% mm. score with mm. critics and has a 96% score with the audience. We, we, Th that, seems, how often that seems high. on anything do you get 100%? Nah, that's, you know, contrived. What, what do you think they paid him off? <laughs> I don't even I don't even look at Rotten Tomatoes. What a pleasant surprise. This what 10 an episode this 10 episode charmer streaming on Hulu is a fine charmer. send up of media culture, in particular the true crime genre, which makes stars out of corpses. There you go. I'm I'm willing to, you know, admit when what, how many how many series Do TV you have shows the time or movies for this BS? No, you don't. You like in out, not a big uh, thick plot line, and then you're by out. By the way, that was uh, Doreen Saint Felix from the New Yorker, oh. which by the way is the font that's used on the show. That's weird. Mm, weird. Mm. Smell a rat. Well, uh, no, only, they they have to give. They're trying to paint the portrait of New York, so they're probably using it to suggest New York. New only New murders York. in the building is so fantastically fun. You'll be as giddy as an 11 year old girl who just mastered the double hula hoop. See, Mike, you like hula hoops. That's. <laughs> Mike could never. You know, no. Man, no. the things they gush about. Uh, mm. That's great. Highly, highly recommended. It's 100%. This I had no idea. Critic. You know what? I had no this idea. This is every I'm... critic giving it a rave. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. But so, the contrarian so in us says, nah, can't be that good. Well, I mean, even <laughs> if it's only three quarters that good, it's still 75. Right. You know it's what? How about strong. this? Uh, our wonderful listeners can weigh in. They'll tell us if we're wrong, right? No, I I value that there are people that like this kind of stuff and people that don't. I Rob knows me, goes back a long time, remembers I'm not a Steve Martin guy. You know what? Actually, Ever. you're not. You aren't. Uh, you I know liked that, him in Roxanne. It's just, I, you know, I th Roxanne was the same kind of okay. Well, the, Roxanne was, you know, that was sort Cyrano of the beginning. Of, well, it was the beginning of the end for Steve sort of being the serious business of comedy. When he's like, yeah. I'm going to take something classic. He, Mike, you have to admit, it was pretty good when he'd come out with an arrow around his head. Uh, uh, fine. <laughs> that was that, uh, you know, uh, back in the day. Yeah, when 40 I was, years I, ago. I bought the album sure, when we I was all a did. kid. Yeah. I'm so mad at my mother. Uh, <laughs> you know, she's 106 years old. And so I'm having him work <laughs> on the father transmission of, the of my car. Uh, father, horrible. No, I, his I, movie. I career, my sister right? would bring me up. My sister would bring me up there and say, we're going to watch Father of the Bride again. It, it is so funny. I'm like, no, his movie uh, career, and I mean, I'm not, I'm no great champion the jerk of Steve was Martin, great. but that, the jerk was great, but yes. Steve Martin's movie career, not that great. Stand up right. guy, clever writer, good talk show guest in the so day. So getting back to, um, but uh, I like this show. Any, any murder, but, but the apartment. That's right. That's, yeah. So, so look, 
Is it worth a, a, a revisit? I won't, but you could. If, yeah. you, if you feel yeah. that way, but you might love it. You might love it. Obviously, I have something wrong with me. No, 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 you don't. Uh, I mean, you people, know. I mean, there's stuff you like, stuff you don't like. Like you've always said, skin right. to win. Animal Kingdom. Oh. Getting back to the yes, original the, show we were talking about. Skin to win. Animal Kingdom. It just, if you like that rapid fire out of the gate, mm-hmm. we're diving right in yes. with action, 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 and it's good action, and it's like betrayal and cousins and the evil Smurf who set her family up for all of this. They don't know she's got an apartment. Mm-hmm. It's just go, 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 and it's a mile it's super and a minute. But, you see, but that to me, that is so unblinkingly Unple- unpleasant. unpleasant. Yeah, why do I, why do I watch that? It's the world is a horrible place, and you might as well yeah, experiencing get, it in your yeah. Art. But but then that's sort of like when you're talking about you don't want to see murders and comedy together because you know well, the world you got to accept. Billions it. is great. Last season of Billions, things really changed. Is this that the right? I, I, I wish I'd stuck no, with that. No. I didn't. I didn't stick with that one. The one I want to see is Succession. That's a good thing. And that's I didn't think you're going to be talking about the well, uh, the the just Chiwi, quick, quick, but yeah, quick teaser yeah. on Billions. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, I'm not giving anything away. They, I, I really enjoy when people roll the pandemic into their productions. Timing wise of how they dealt with it, which okay. is, by the way, not easy to do. No, you you literally had to film during the pandemic. Yeah, to make sure that like this this was you happening. Had some content right? ready yes. to go. Yeah, and at one point, X uh, Capital, uh, he comes on a, a video feed to his company. He says, "We've done everything we can to lie and cheat to get you vaccines when you weren't supposed to." To his staff, right? <laughs> Billions, eighty nine percent. Yes, cheat. yes. So, 89% for So he billion. comes on and says, everybody that, that has been vaccinated, take off your mask. He goes, all of you, we've done everything. We've figured out how to get you and pretend you have uh, terminal illnesses to get the vaccine before <laughs> anybody else because he's always finding his edge. Right. Right. And then there's half the people have their masks on still because they have been vaccinated. Uh-huh. They oh, said, my God. Those of you that have not gotten vaccinated, we will work on that. But starting today, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, that's like watching, watching the show. Surreal. That's Surreal. Like, that's worth watching yes. the show. That's a good plot uh, point. And I could go on about that, too, because yeah. we uh, I guess they nominated a new Surgeon General in the state mm-hmm. of Florida, a vaccine mm-hmm. uh, skeptic. Really? Yeah. Is he was he from yeah. an, is he from an urgent care? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Uh, we got to take a break. Okay. That was more time than I allotted to the opening of the show. We have to take a break. When you come back, it's the homepage, and then later on, uh, tease your uh, nostalgia corner. What are you going to be talking about today? Uh, the oldest nostalgia corner we've ever done, and also the sixth funniest movie ever made. Whoa. Oh boy. I'm sorry. Okay. Fifth. All right. Fifth. I'm sorry. That's Fifth. just because of the discussion we Top had. Six. We'll be right back. You know I love you. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. It's aging television heartthrob Tom Selleck. Back in the 80s, I played a Hawaiian detective on Magnum P.I. Look, this isn't my first rodeo, and let me tell you something. I wouldn't be here today if I thought the Mike O'Mara bonus show took advantage of any American podcast listener. Or worse, that it was some kind of way to take your home. Now, who the hell am I kidding? I'd sell my own grandmother for a hot lunch. No, a Mike O'Mara bonus show subscription isn't some kind of trick to take away your home. In fact, it's quite affordable. I mean, I can't afford that kind of thing anymore, but surely you can. After all, this is how Mike Rob and Oscar try to feed their families. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com and start your subscription today, won't you? Look, I'm proud to be part of the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show family. I trust them, and I think you can too. The other thing people always ask me is if I banged Courtney Cox when I was on Friends. Yes. Yes, I did. And I think you could too. (laughs) He turned that in about 82 minutes. We love you. Keep them coming. Fantastic. When was the last time you checked the current value of your home? Yeah, Have you Oscar. looked at that lately? Do they teach you that here? Brad. With home equity rising at the highest level in years, you may be sitting on a golden opportunity without even knowing it. The nationwide average, homes have increased 18% in value. It's bananas. <laughs> And yours could be worth even more. <laughs> so what does this mean to you? Bananas. With record low interest rates. I checked them this morning. They're bananas. But Mike, if you had to pick a fruit to right. describe interest rates, 
Yeah, you know what? Uh, the, two fruits. Yeah. Peachy banana. <laughs> oh, my God. Get out. Look out. Uh, <laughs> look, there's a lot of equity out there. You can remove PMI, pay off credit cards, student loans, or take that vacation you've been putting off, making all of it tax deductible. It's more important now than ever to work with a team you can trust, and I trust my friend Mark Livingstone and his team at Cornerstone First Financial. Cornerstone First is a direct lender. They got their own money, so they can guarantee to meet or beat any competitor, and they will tell you what your home is worth with with no obligation. Whether a refinance or a purchasing, uh, <laughs> a purchasing a new home. Hey, is it time to buy? You buy a put Whether in the house. Whether you want to do the refinance or a purchase. Eh? <laughs> uh, you need to call now. Cornerstone First Financial, 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Uh, uh, let me give it to you. 202-625-1221. And uh, we thank you. And you know why you have to go to them, Mike? Because if you don't, the rent... Stays the same. <laughs> Stays the same as before. That's it. What happened? What happened to my thing? You need it? No, I'm just, no, I'm, I'm looking for it. I'm going to figure this okay, out. Okay, it's fine, because I've got it standing by if you'd like it. The rent stays the, the same, same as, as before. before. Why is that so low song? Shh, everybody oh, listen. I turned it because I turned it down at the end of the show yesterday. Okay. I'm a professional. Look it up in the book. From the four corners of the World Wide Web Thank you. and into your digital device. It's what you need to know. This is the homepage. Yes, it is, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, uh, Will and Jada Smith had a scare at their Calabasas home on Monday afternoon. A fire. A fire broke out. Fire. Oh, no. Fire. Fire, 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 fire. fire. A witness said the fire actually broke out in the basement and a fireman had to be treated. Apparently, Will and Jada were there, but no one else was injured. So uh, everybody's doing okay, which is uh, good news. Is there a criminal criminal investigation? No, there is not. Because no, I think the I, cops could get their uh, kid out and look for some fresh prints. Oh, God. That's just painful. Because he was on a show. Gross. <laughs> mm, mm. That and other great jokes on the new Martin Short show, Only Murder, in our building. In the building. <laughs> Only in murders the in building. the building. Murders in Only the murders building. in the building. Maybe it uh, would have a higher score on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> if I knew the title. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, what is your opinion, uh, since we've been getting a lot of your opinions today, what is your opinion of Elvira? Elvira, the mistress of the dark? Yes. Um, I think she still manages to look stunning. And so I you're think a fan. I am. And also, I think she has turned one joke into quite a career, considering the fact she's got a good past. She has pretty good, uh, a, a pretty solid comedy past, so I like her. All right. Uh, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, just released a new memoir called Yours Cruelly, Elvira, and it contains a pretty legit bombshell. She has been in a 19-year relationship with a woman. She Whoa. kept the relationship quiet all these years to protect the Elvira character, but obviously she's ready to live her truth now. On a more sober note, Elvira also claims that NBA legend Wilt Chamberlain forced her to give him oral. Oh, Here's the quote. When a seven foot one, 300 pound man has his hand wrapped around your neck, there's really not a lot you can do. Ooh, no, uh, Wilt once boasted that he'd slept with 20,000 women, and Elvira now wonders how many of those encounters were non consensual. That's a bombshell in yeah. the book. Elvira also confirms the old rumor that she had sex with Tom Jones when she was a Vegas showgirl. I'd heard that. Uh, and ended up in the ER uh, with an injury. Because he was so down there. Wow. She actually had to go to the ER. Mike, that Sounds is... Sounds like BS to me, but uh, who knows? You that know? is unusual. So that's Will Chamberlain, unwanted, mm-hmm. Tom Jones in the ER because he was... And, uh, and you know, she's in a relationship 19 years with a woman. Do you remember the uh, scene in Pee-wee's Big Adventure when he's in the biker bar? And, yes. And the bikers all give him a hard time. And a buxom biker comes over, a lady biker, and says, I say you let me have my way with him. And, and sort of grabs him by mm-hmm. the head. That's actually Elvira in a cameo appearance because she and Pee Wee go way back. Oh wow! Yeah. But she's not in the Elvira makeup in that. And and her, but she's got the Elvira cleavage. Yes, she does. Mm-hmm. She I, well, I look. I, you gotta you gotta you gotta believe her. We gotta figure out what's what they say, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's Tom. Tom mm-hmm. Jones. Uh, on Monday night, the Rolling Stones played their first gig. Oh, this makes me... I, I love the story. I hate the story, and you'll know why mm-hmm. I hate the story. They played their first gig since Charlie Watts' death at a private event 
hosted by Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Of course. I like the Rolling Stones. Hey, let me get the Rolling Stones to play here. Uh, he's got the money. He can be I mean, ready. Like, what would we do? Yeah, he's got. He's the guy. You know. Uh, Mick Jagger kicked off the uh, the show with a tribute to Charlie. I just all right. Is it me? No. Is it me that I'm saying it, Mick Jagger? They should have played tribute to Charlie. You do that for the public, yeah, not for a private show. That's not when you do it, whores. <laughs> Sorry, uh, right? Am I My, wrong about that? Why am I pissed off about that? The world's greatest rock and roll band has always been about making the most money. And Jeez. I'm sure this That's was one of the first concerned. show since. Well, the Nakasa. It is. It, it is. is. And yeah. it's like the first show since Charlie, and it yeah. should have been in a stadium somewhere. Yeah, because the tour is coming Charlie? up. <laughs> Charlie. Anyway, Mick wow. kicked off the show with a tribute Sorry. to Charlie. He said, quote, this is our first tour in 59 years that we've done without our lovely Charlie Watts. We all miss Charlie so much. We miss him as a band. We miss him as friends on and off the stage. And we've got so many memories of Charlie. And I'm sure that some of you have seen us before. Uh, some of you who have seen us before have got memories of Charlie as Aww. well, and I hope you will remember him like we do. So we'd like to dedicate this show to Charlie. What, the private show for Bob Kraft? God, that makes me mad! Mike, was Charlie Stuang Stabilak even contacted to fill in as drummer? I don't think so. I, you know, and if something happens, you'll know. Okay. You know. <laughs> Just a thought. Hockey talk woman! Hockey talk woman! <laughs> Uh, then Ronnie Wood said, uh, Charlie, we're praying for you, man, and playing for you. The Stones officially relaunched their No Filter tour on Sunday in St. Louis. Why, why is this bothering me so much? It should. What it is should. the deal? Because I mean, just, what you don't have in the story is that when Keith got up to sing his solo song, I think he said it was going to do Happy. Mm -hmm. He got up and he said, where's Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> BuzzFeed recently conducted a quiz to find out how people feel about common, common flying habits. And they got well over 100,000 responses. Here are the highlights. Uh, which seat is the best? 70% say it's the window seat. 29% with the aisle. 1% pick the middle seat. Pony. Uh, that's an interesting people. <laughs> Pony likes the middle. I know uh, which is choice. easier, just to carry on or a check bag? 63% 63 chose, 63 chose carry on. 37% said they'd rather check well, it you know, so you they don't prefer, have to lug it around. You prefer the window, don't you? I prefer the, oh, always. Yeah, you like absolutely. To I like the aisle because you're never having to inconvenience people to get out if you need to get out. I stay, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, a camel, so I don't have to pee that uh, often. I pee and so all the time. I really, really like to see where we are. If, uh, if there's terrain, I like to see yeah. what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's that control thing. Uh, what's the best airplane snack? 45% said cookies. 41% said pretzels. 14% said peanuts. Although those are rare on planes now due to allergy policies. Uh, I would go with the peanuts, but you don't get them anymore. Now, so I, my favorite is it. hot soup. I Mike, when when you we have hot soup. <laughs> yes, go ahead. When you travel, like you don't expect any. I don't expect anything anymore. I expect. I nothing. don't either. I don't. Nothing, 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 nothing. It's sad, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It really is. Uh, do you recline your seat? Forty-five percent of people, polite people, said no because it's rude to the person behind you. Forty-three percent of the pigs said yes, mm -hmm. but only if they're trying to sleep. Which on any long flight is everybody. Yeah, and, it's, and but uh, the reclining is only four inches. You can sleep sitting up too, you know, jerk. Uh, Twelve percent said yes all the time, mm -hmm. and I, you know, those people because they get on, and as soon as they get in the seat, it's back in your of knees. Of course, that's Thump. the way that goes. And do you use the onboard bathroom? Sixty-eight percent said yes. Thirty-two percent said no. No word about big or small potty though uh, <laughs> on that particular issue. <laughs> I, 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 I would rather die than go big potty in an airplane toilet. Yes. Absolutely. I have to concur. It, sometimes you got to go. Sometimes you got to go, Oscar, mm -hmm. but being a man of smaller stature than Rob and I, it's a space issue. I'm sure that it's the same Thank person you. that brings in Chinese food before takeoff. <laughs> <Yeah>. This moosh is <laughs> talking to me. Uh, this might disappoint some of the chillins out there. Yeah. Uh, McDonald's has announced that they're phasing out plastic toys in Happy Meals. Uh, they're not ditching the toys themselves, just the plastic. Okay. Which uh, they say will drastically cut uh, be cut out by 2025. That goal will reduce unrecycled virgin plastic use by 90%, and that's significant because McDonald's sells more than 1 billion toys each year. They're also planning to recycle old plastic toys to make new restaurant trays. The whole tr the whole tray? Mike, this is very fun because they're replacing the plastic toys with toys made of leather. 
fairies. Yeah. <laughs> More cows are going to die. Well, they're already yeah, well, killed no, them they for kill the them meat. anyway. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. As for the future, McDonald's is working with toy companies to develop things like three-dimensional cardboard superheroes or board games with plant-based pieces. Uh, the new toys will begin rolling out in uh, January, which I think is really wonderful. All girls and boys love toys. Who doesn't love a toy? <laughs> Do you ever have a moment that makes you feel like you're in a horror movie? A new homeowner in the UK discovered behind a wall an old rag doll. All right. I guess he was doing some kind of renovation. Didn't mm -hmm. I guess it wasn't intended or maybe the hole was there. Uh, but there was a hole because I saw a picture of this. Right. And there's this horrifying looking rag doll. It gets worse. This story. OK. It also had a note where the doll introduced itself as Emily. And it killed the original owners and ended with, I hope you all have knives. Sleep oh, well. Yikes. My God. The homeowner's friends are spooked, uh, but he isn't bothered by it. The doll was found in an area that was recently renovated, so he thinks it was just planted in there a few years ago as a joke. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, his next door neighbor told reporters, uh, I hope he also has some rusty spoons. Oh, <laughs> because we're going to talk to his neighbor right now. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Hello. I've moved in next door to you. Hello, Hubert Cumberdale and Marjorie <laughs> Stewart Baxter. Can I rub your doorknob? It ah. looks a little rusty. Hold on a second. Oh. I think I'm going to dig out in my backyard for some ugly bodies. Thank you. There you go. That's Ugh. all I have. All I right. don't care for and that. I, do you, can you tell I jumped the uh, impression without uh, setting it up properly? I, I, had, I went right I had into a that before. Similar situation yeah. happen uh, in Bolivia uh, when we were renovating the house my dad lives in. Now yes. we found a pan flute shaped like the Atlantic Ocean. And it said, you'll never win a war. <laughs> Good callback. Welcome to La Paz, people. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. Oh. We'll come back with the uh, Nostalgia Corner and Rob Spiewak right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Today, something really, really old, mm. hence the word nostalgia. Exactly. It's, uh, is it's it not a tribute to Steve Martin? <laughs> <laughs> Touché. We'll be right back on the Michael Barry <laughs> Show. Thank you, Marjorie Stop it. Yeah, boy. Rick Schofield. Let's kick it. Oh, man. Right. 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 Woo. Oh, yeah. All right, stop. Tune it in and listen. Mike is back with the podcast invention. Download TMOS on the daily. Become a P1 just like Share it Daily. Mike, Oscar, Rob, and Pony. That's the crew of my podcast home. I got a fever. And the only prescription is an annual bonus subscription. Go to MikeOmeraShow.com. Like the views of a comedy lap on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher. Spotify, make your smartphone richer. Love it or leave it, you better hit play. You'll eat it all up. Yo, the whole tray? If there was a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while Pony revolves. Mike, Mike, baby. Woo! Ain't out. Is that Pony that did that? No, it's scary if it was. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. We were talking about Animal Kingdom and one of the funniest yeah. scenes, really, if you can do the uh, you know a robbery and comedy at the same time, is they rob this yacht. They get on this yacht to rob these uh -huh. uh, young uh, hedge fund type guys that are on this particular yacht, and they don't have any cash because they're playing for dollars, and the dollars all represent ten thousand dollars of Bitcoin. Oh, it really no. is. It, it's really a great scene in Animal Kingdom. You know, cryptocurrency might feel like a super secret or exclusive club but Coinbase believes that everyone everywhere should be able to get in the door. Whether you've been trading for years or just getting started, Coinbase can help. If you identify as crypto curious, Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell simple. Coinbase offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell and spend cryptocurrency. Plus, they support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection 
protection, learning resources, and a mobile app so you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. Millions of people in over 100 countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. Whether you're looking to diversify or just getting started, visit the website and check it out. It's a great time to get started. For a limited time, new users can get $5 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at Coinbase.com slash TMOS. That's Coinbase.com slash TMOS for $5 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. That's Coinbase.com slash TMOS. And thank you, Coinbase, for sponsoring our show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're bringing him back after a uh, wonderful run uh, with all the murders in the building or whatever the hell that show was called. I uh, give you the Nostalgia Corner, uh, backed by popular demand with our own uh, Mr. Rob Spiewak. Take it away, Rob. Mike, the year is 1933. Franklin Delano Roosevelt is inaugurated for the first time. Construction begins on the Golden Gate Bridge. The New Deal is introduced, beginning the end of the Great Depression. And of course, Dom DeLuise is born. But that's not important right now. What year? 1933. 33. 33. America is at peace, but in the movie theaters, the Marx Brothers are headed off to war in Duck Soup. Now, Duck Soup, in 2007, the AFI ranked it as the 60th greatest motion picture of all time, and in the year 2000, ranked it number five as America's funniest movies of all time. It's 2020. Yes, why not give us a more recent story? They don't do it every year, jerk. I mean, oh, Oscar. In 20 years. <laughs> I misspoke. Um, Oscar, what can you tell me about the Marx Brothers? What do you? When I say Marx Brothers, what do you think? Uh, Karl Marx, communist. Knew exactly what he was going to say. Still a good joke, but wrong. Uh, there are four brothers. Can you name any of them? Oh, no. no I don't. Scared. Luigi? Well, there is one with an Italian I accent. Can name Mario? I can name them. I can name them. Okay. Can I do it? Yeah, please. King play? Koopa? Sure. Uh, Groucho? Exactly. Chico? Right. Zeppo. Right. And uh, think large musical instrument. Trombone. And bigger than that. Mm. Snare drum. Piano. No. A stringed instrument. Bongo. Harpo. Exactly. Those are the four Marx brothers. And this, mm. amazingly, was the last Paramount picture made by all four Did Marx brothers. Did they wear the little mustaches? Well, no. Well, Groucho had a mustache. Yeah. yeah. Groucho did. Yeah. Groucho was the most famous of the uh, Marx Brothers. Longest career. And also, the, fi- the film was called Duck Soup. Do either of you know what Duck Soup means? Duck Soup means uh, you're in a Chinese restaurant and you've got a really delicious uh, fowl that uh, is being cooked in a soup. Actually, in the 1930s, Duck Soup was American slang, meaning something that's extraordinarily easy to do, like easy as pie. It's Duck Soup. That's hey, how easy it's it is. Duck Soup, baby. This was the final film that. for Mark's brother, uh, Zeppo Marx, who said he was sick of being called the unfunny Mark's brother. So he left okay. the group. Wait, so these guys were like the Baldwins before the Baldwins? Yeah. Ex- wow. I mean, like but, but they were, well, no, they were mean, all they, no, they were the three. Together. They were the Three Stooges before the Three Stooges. Yeah, they were a comedy team that were actually right? brothers. Would, that, would I have my timeline yeah. right about yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Robert yeah. Downey Jr. do a, uh, a Marx Brothers? No, he did Chaplin. No. Oh, he, he did, did Chaplin, Chaplin his guys. best, in my yeah. opinion, his best movie. Mm. Yeah, a really good movie. A really good yeah, movie. Be, be, better than anything else he's done. So mm. Zeppo, when he left uh, the group of the Marx Brothers, he actually, this was long enough ago, in 1933, he essentially invented the role of the Hollywood agent to battle the studios representing one client at a time. Pretty fascinating. That he when was you able say to- he invented the role, what, there, as a character? No, no, there was really no... You mean ho- he invented the job yeah, of the, the, being... Yeah, the, the role of the agent in the life of a yeah, Hollywood Yeah, but when you're star. talking about actors, that's not the right okay, way to well, express the, it. Okay, he invented the position of a Hollywood agent. So he negotiated all the Marx Brothers deals? He worked, I think he represented some of the Marx Brothers and some of the other stars, yeah, because he was, you know, from the outside looking in at that time, he knew how to sort of operate both sides what was zeppo all right chico was named Ch- harpo harpo play who was the piano chico played the piano correct? right right and uh, you, he was know, the great piano player uh harpo was the one that was silent and communicated with was like mute. a horn yeah exactly exactly what did zeppo do zeppo was usually the romantic lead sort of okay and he oftentimes right. was cast as groucho's son which is weird because they're only like six years apart um so in this uh oh and also an interesting thing is that zeppo's widow would eventually marry frank sinatra 
Mm. So there is that sort of correlation there. In this movie, Groucho plays Rufus T. Firefly, Chico plays Chickalini, Harpo plays Pinky, and of course, Margaret Dumont plays Mrs. Teasdale, the wealthy dowager, a character very common in these movies. Also, great comedian Edgar Kennedy, the master of the slow burn, plays the owner of a lemonade cart that they have run-ins with. But all of that, a lot of that is done almost in pantomime. Because Harpo is versus him. You know, Rob, as somebody who doesn't know anything about the Marx Brothers, when I'm looking at Zeppo, yeah. uh, Marx, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, he doesn't look like he fit in at all. No, but I mean, they, it was just like he was so different that there was no, there there weren't any props. No, and like, was, like a, Stephen Baldwin. The weird the thing about him, though, is that in, in retrospect, they say off stage. He was every bit as funny and charming as the other Marx Brothers. He just didn't have a role amongst his like brothers. Like Alec himself. was Harpo. Or Marx. No, Alec would be Groucho. Alec, Alec was Groucho. Groucho, Absolutely. I'm sorry. Alec's Groucho. Right. And uh, I guess uh, Stephen would probably be Chico. Okay, there All you right. go. Um, the movie was- Did Dor you say Chico? You see, you, see, you hear it- Chico? You, no, you hear it pronounced both ways. And I think Groucho said Chico- Are you trying to be like, uh, you know, uh, in the know with, with your pronunciation? Because I he, picked up on that. You kind of tried to get away with it. He got his name for that. chasing chicks. Is and so that's why they called, they called him Chico. Is Chico okay. and the Man the same show? No different show. That would be. But that would Freddy be. In, oh. Then if they would never. Why did they spell it C H I C O instead? Why Chico. didn't they spell it C H I C K O? I don't know, but I know how Groucho pronounced it. He called him Chico. So and but you know what? I grew up saying Chico, so I accept both. I do accept. Okay. I thought it was a Very silent good. film. How do you know how he no, said? No, no. These the, the Marx Brothers <laughs> were definitely a talking oh, group. Oh. Oh, Harpo so never silent. spoke. It. it wasn't a silent picture. <laughs> the movie was directed, Mike, by Leo McCary, who would go on to do many classic films like Going My Way, My Favorite Wife, and I think this is one you're a fan of, An Affair to Remember, the Cary Grant, Deborah Carr movie where they meet on the Empire State Building at the end. Okay. Yeah, so he was a, a very notable director, but he was also tremendously religious, socially aware, and anti-war, which mm. comes into play in this movie. Here's the plot. The country of Fredonia and that's where they live, is in the middle of a financial crisis and on the brink of revolution in order to gain a bailout from the wealthy Mrs. Teasdale, the government appoints Rufus T. Firefly as their president. As chairwoman of the reception committee, I extend the good wishes of every man, woman, and child of Fredonia. Never mind that stuff. Take a card. Card? What will I do with the card? You can keep it. I've got 51 left. Now, what were you saying? As chairwoman of the reception committee, I welcome you with open arms. Is that so? How late do you stay open? I've sponsored your appointment because I feel you are the most able statesman in all Fredonia. Well, that covers a lot of ground. Say, you cover a lot of ground yourself. You better beat it. I hear they're going to tear you down and put up an office building where you're standing. You can leave in a taxi. If you can't get a Fat taxi, joke, you can leave right? in a huff. If that's too soon, you can leave in a minute and a huff. You know you haven't stopped talking since I came here? You must have been vaccinated with a phonograph needle. Meanwhile, next to Fredonia is the country of Sylvania. Wait, they were talking about vaccinations. Exactly. Whoa. That's pretty timely, isn't Whoa. it? It comes back, yeah. Spanish flu? But, but, but phonograph needle, not as, not as current as the Funny. vaccination. Uh, the country of Sylvania wants to take over Fredonia, and they're going to do so by having the president marry Mrs. Teasdale. So they need to discredit Firefly. That's the Groucho character, because Mrs. Teasdale loves him. So they hire spies who are played by Chico, Chico, and Harpo. And uh, they say, he must be shadowed. Well, you remember, you gave us a picture of this man. Oh, and by the way, for no reason ever explained to anybody, Chico speaks with an Italian accent. That's just was it's a holdover from vaudeville. He well, wasn't was Italian. Because they had to restore it from silent film. They weren't worried about that. I suppose, Oscar, so this is my favorite silent film with talking in it. Well, you remember you gave us a picture of this man and said, follow him? Oh, yes. Well, we get on the job right away. And in the one hour, even in less than one hour, yes? we lose the pigs. That's a pretty quick wait, eh? I want a full, detailed report of your investigation. All right, I tell you. Monday, we watch the Firefly's house, but he no come out. He wasn't home. Tuesday, we go to the ball game, but he fool us. He no show up. Wednesday, he go to the ball game, or we fool him. We no show up. Thursday was a doubleheader. Nobody show up. Friday, it rained all day. There was no ball game. So we stayed home. We listened to her over the radio. Then you didn't shadow Firefly. Oh, sure, we shadow Fire. We shadow him all day. But what day was that? Saturday. <laughs> That's some joke, eh, boss? Now, the movie, the plot is almost not even consequential. As you described earlier, Mike, it's gag after gag Thank after God gag. God for that. After gag oh. after gag. And, uh, is it's, there a shorter clip maybe the, you could the, have picked? You know what? This is fun. I My think you're. All, I like that you're all having a good time, too. Uh, the movie is pure insanity, and it marks the last time that the Marx Brothers performed 
Outside, Can you find something let him do it. This is his fun. He's enjoying this. What about pretty let him enjoy pink? this. And there's a segment of our audience that's enjoying this. Yeah, they're dead. Most of them are going to say they've been buried for years, <laughs> but they love it. Uh, this is the last time they made a movie without true studio influence. There's no romantic subplot. There's no musical numbers that are serious musical numbers because what happened is when they would leave Paramount and go to MGM, they would become ultimately a more profitable organization. They went out on their own. No, they oh. went over to MGM and they would make it They more, went to talkies from silence. They went over to MGM and they tried to make them more mainstream oh, by God, softening God. the characters. This is anarchy. Mm. And also the thing that is sort We're of amazing. We're really running late. Okay. Um, I, I suggest you Let's go see Duck Let's put a button on this. Yeah, go see Duck Soup. You'll like it. <laughs> duck Soup. You like Duck Soup. What's your closing paragraph? My closing paragraph is this, is the fact that in 1933, even though America was at peace, these people were- they had the the ability to see what was Can going on. How do you on. tolerate us? How do you tolerate us? I ask you that I question. I want your closing you? paragraph to be, fuck you and fuck you. That's what I want that to be. No, Someday you may get your wish. He, he was right about the Steve Martin Martin short thing, and now mm -hmm. he's doing the Can you pull Marx up Ron Brothers Tomatoes, Brothers. Duck Soup? I wish I loved that. it. I wish I, I've tried because of Rob. I've tried to watch the Marx Brothers. What is what is what does Rotten Tomatoes say about Duck Soup? I'm just curious. Let, and I'll I'd finish up in the this. time that you take Please. to do that. I will say this, that war was brewing. Seeds were planted in Europe at the time this movie was being made. 91%. Even, even though America- Dog was, Hey, soup? Pony, yeah. I sometimes like to do my own research. 91%. Thank you. It's a very funny movie. Uh, they, We're not wrong about this. The thing is, um, you, the USA was at peace. We're coming out of the Depression. Yeah. The seeds of World War II have been planted in Europe. In its day, it probably translated very well. I don't think it does now. I and don't think it has for decades, to be honest with you. That's just my opinion. All right. Benito Mussolini hated the movie and banned it in Italy because he thought it was making fun of the Italian government. Oh, wow. And when that got back to the Marx Brothers, they flipped their lid. They were so happy because right. they were making social commentary at the time, and the people didn't realize it. The movie is under 70 minutes long, mm. and every frame is perfect. And the weird thing is the whole movie... Really, the theme is government based on trying to get a woman to fall in love with you so you can take over the country. And there was no one that could seduce a woman like Groucho. Can't you see what I'm trying to tell you? I love you. Why don't you marry me? I can see you right now in the kitchen bending over a hot stove. But I can't see the stove. <laughs> I suppose you think me a sentimental old fluff, but uh, would you mind giving me a lock of your hair? A lock of my hair? Why, <laughs> I had no idea. I'm letting you off easy. I was going to ask for the whole wig. It's a great, great gateway drug if you want to you learn about You picked a couple them. of good lines. Yeah. I laughed at both of those If lines. you want to get good. into the Marx Brothers, this is a great one to see. And uh, yeah, the anti-war sentiment, it's pretty solid nowadays. I like it. All right. Uh, we're going to take a short break. Coming up, and the thanks uh, comedy. thanks to both of you. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we were supportive during that. Yeah. We're... Coming up, the comedy of Norm Crosby <laughs> as we uh, on the Rob Spiewak Show. We'll take a break and be right back, everybody. Yeah! Well, I meant to play that. Maybe Sorry. something else sucks around here. People suck. People suck. Now, I know I've done this before, but I want to try it again. A new idea to replace the mailbag. People suck. Has someone done something that just so gets under mm -hmm. your skin that complaining to your partner or your children or anybody in your room or your close friends mm -hmm. just isn't enough? Someone who's done something so egregious and it's more. such yeah. a violation of your social norms that you want to scream it. Here's what we do, uh, folks, is you email me, Rob with two Bs, Rob at MikeOmeraShow.com. Make sure you write in the subject line. People suck, people suck, people suck. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. When it comes to thinning hair, you no longer have to choose between natural remedies and those that work. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness without drugs or prescriptions. Did you know that there are five root causes of thinning hair? Nutrafol is the hair supplement that goes beyond genetics to target stress hormones, nutrition, metabolism, and environmental factors that may be impacting your hair. Nutrafol is clinically shown to improve hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage without compromise. 21 potent natural ingredients also support sex drive, better sleep, and less stress. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. Nutrafol is also trusted and recommended by more than 1,500 top doctors. You can grow thicker, 
healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code TMOS to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com promo code TMOS. All right, did you did you get everything in that yes. you wanted to get in uh, and i swear and i swear that if people take the hour and nine minutes it takes to watch this movie you're going to enjoy yourself i promise you and i it can be off-putting because the movie is now nearing a hundred years old Mm -hmm. and it's black and white and it does start with the code that says you know national recovery administration we're going to get out of this depression it puts you in the frame of mind of a long time ago but the rapid fire pace and it really falls under the construction that Mike talked about at the front of the show. Gag after gag after gag after gag after gag. There is a modicum of plot to stitch it together, but the laughs What's come the, fast. What's uh, the movie where he sings Lydia the Tattooed Lady? That's at the circus, and that, as a okay. rule, is not one of their better movies, because, okay. again, that was at MGM. There was a guy at MGM named Irving Thalberg that was a genius, and he saw them as a opportunity, an opportunity to make a lot of money for MGM, but he wanted to increase their audience. So what he did is he would take a... 75 minute comedy stretch it into a 110 minute movie by adding a good looking leading man a romantic subplot several sappy musical numbers Mm -hmm. so that if a guy like me says i want to go and laugh i can say to my wife come on you can come to this movie it has alan jones singing in it yeah and so there was something for everybody and so their box office would go up 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 but their comedic credibility was somehow pulled down got it so and they were they came from the stage and another thing they um, did, I'm sorry, okay. go ahead. Just go this ahead. is this is fascinating. I thought your segment was over. So did I. But he opened up <laughs> Pandora's box. So enjoy. Uh, they were the first motion picture stars to take set pieces like comedy routines on the road to play them on stage to live audiences. So in the movie, they know how long to pause like for Steve-O. laughs. A little bit, yeah. But they know how long to pause for. There was a great scene where Harpo coughed a loogie into Groucho's eye. No, not really. No, they would. They <laughs> would like know the one where, where where Groucho jumps out of the plane and he, he furiously emits. He emits. <laughs> Who didn't go to bed sleeping about <laughs> thinking about that last night? Good I w- Lord, woke Steve-O. up thinking about it. But uh, they wow. would. But they knew the timing for an audience for pausing for I, laughter. I'm, I, I love you, I, and I'm sure people love this. But like in my head, I'm here. Womp, 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 You're hearing the Charlie Brown oh, teacher. Just driving me Rob, nuts. I watched on Turner Classic Movies. I watched an entire old movie the other what night. What movie? Uh, Humphrey Bogart movie, The Harder They Fall. You ever watched that one? Boxing movie. Boxing movie, he yeah. Is, it's yeah, one absolutely. of his later movies, and he plays a, a hard-boiled, is it a boxing promoter or manager? Boxing uh, like press agent. Yeah, it's a great, he's such it's a great really actor. It's really good. Yeah, he didn't make many really, bad really pictures. Good. He didn't, the yeah. only thing is that when you get- I called him overrated one time on the show and got a lot of attack mail for that for people that like nostalgia. I love you when know? you see a Bogart movie from the latter part of his career, and they do like a full body shot, and you realize that his face is a quarter of his height because he had- I no- just looked it up. <laughs> The right. harder they fall, got one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I think you'll find the bulk of Bogart's films I'm will have so over ninety. I didn't expect that. It's, it's uh, would mass you like appeal. to recommend a movie? Since uh, well, I you just know, thought, since we're we we want people to learn about things they want to learn about, right? They can just go to right. Wikipedia for this nonsense. Let's yes. go. Uh, let's go. Maybe something uh, from the eighties or the seventies. What's a, give it uh, an eighties? Raging movie. Bull. Uh, uh, Raging Bull. Yeah, it's uh, 1980, I film. think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raging Bull. Well, I'll black give you and white. One. Uh, yeah, like the color of money. That's green. Yes. Oh, I, you That's meant the, the movie. Paul Newman version. Yes. Yeah, but you know what? The color of money is not as good as the Hustler, which was the precursor to that, where he right? played Fast Eddie Felson against Gleason as the fat man. I think the color of money. There is a period in Tom Cruise's career where Tom Cruise is so Tom Cruisey yeah, that it, it grosses me out. If you want to see, and I've always said this to people, <laughs> if you're somebody who is on the fence, and by the way, the body of work with Tom Cruise, some great movies, really great movies that I'd watch again and again and again. Yeah. If you want to see Tom Cruise at his flesh crawling cruisiest, get the movie Cocktail. I was going to say, and yeah. watch posing, one of my favorites, dancing. He, it just he's so smarmy in it and he's so i'm cute little tom cruise that it's just and i love uh the actress that's in it too i forgot what her name elizabeth shoe yes who i i had a crush From on adventures I think she's and fantastic. babysitting yeah yes yeah wonderful actress i'm yes. wearing a pair of Ooh. them now 
That's the cruisiest. That's the one that I can't stand. <laughs> what I about stand Caligula? It. I can't see. You like oldies? Uh, oh, hang tell on. us about that one. Oscar loves this. So uh, Caligula, if you really I love, want there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a little yeah, nostalgia. Let me do a, let me do something for the pervs in the audience. Okay. And I'll I'll do I'll do five, let me see. No, I don't have any money. I mean I don't have any time. <laughs> and I don't have any money. <laughs> Mike, let me was, do one minute. Let me do was, one minute. That was such a groucho take you just did. I don't have yes. any money. I don't have any time, but I also don't, don't have any money. time. Don't have any money. <laughs> one minute on Caligula. All right, go. All right. I believe you could put on Caligula. The oh, uh, do not uh, watch this without with children. This is an adult yes. film. Thank you, Mike. This is an X-rated adult film, and I think it is a tour de force. I think it is one of the first real pornography movies that incorporated a real plot line and the insane Malcolm McDowell yes. as the emperor, the Roman emperor Caligula, and it is f- I still have scenes in that that represent to me the decadence of the Roman Empire, and it's hyper violent, it's sexually uh, hypercharged in that department as well, and if the Roman uh, Empire was like that yeah. it had to be a pretty terrifying world uh, to live in, but of course the people at the top of the food chain were y- enjoying their lives but everybody else it is but malcolm mcdowell as the emperor caligula mm. have you ever seen it oscar have you ever seen yeah, it and all i can entirety? remember is man i wish they had a harry's razor endorsement uh, yeah you know what i saw there is an r-rated the cut there's an r-rated <laughs> cut that they would have show in cinemax occasion i never saw the original it's not worth watching the r-rated cut yeah. because it's just not the same will you entertain it's a not question the same. you have to see the yes go ahead true yes. or false when you watch the banquet scenes they were most reminiscent of wava ratings parties <laughs> absolutely <laughs> without the penthouse pets unfortunately <laughs> But as Oscar said, it was uh, you know things get a little hairy once in a while. That's they uh, they really they really do. So, that's it. but I'll tell you, there's one you know when uh, when Peter O'Toole, who uh, who is the emperor before Caligula, yes. uh, finds the guard that is drunk on duty and uh, kills him in a very horrific way. It's pretty nasty, and uh, they they show a lot. They show a lot, but they show uh, a lot, you know, Damone. Well, you know, it's a fantasy. Have you ever watched an adult film? Yeah, I okay. have. I have other fantasies, though. But the, the difference between this adult <laughs> film and other adult films is this is really a movie. It is. It was this a big budget. A, a film. Yeah, this isn't just a just like behind to, the green door. Yeah. Yeah. It, I never watched behind the green door. Never saw it. Never had the pleasure. I but knocked I will on tell it. You, uh, <laughs> and by the way, older porno movies vi- they call them vintage in the yeah. genre. Yeah. They kind of they kind of gross me out. Not great because they're they're not as what about clean. porkies? Uh, That's not a porkies, porno. Not a porno. Just R rated. <laughs> Hard R. We'll be right back. Have you heard the latest bonus show? If you haven't, here's what you missed. I'm just going to be back here with my candle. Happy birthday, dear Carla. Can you give me anything? Nothing. Candle with the match. Candle with the match. You're such a tiny little pinky. I'm sure Dirk has photos of him. I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to get bitten in the crotch by a big stinky dog. <laughs> the physical calendar is the worst. Why? Unless it's all of David Hasselhoff or Dolph Lundgren. And- to my guys that love me, my thank guys. you. If you don't have a bonus show subscription, what are you waiting for? It's your only chance to get that fifth hour of comedy power delivered to your device every Friday. Be a part of the fun and get your subscription now at Michael. America Took my brat out to lunch today uh, nice. to the uh, little Vietnamese place around the corner and uh, uh, watched her work in two phones at the same time. Mm. It was amazing. Is you that know? distressing or is it deal. hot? Well, it's kind of like her business, her boyfriend. Her did, business, yeah, her boyfriend. Did you ever get? Did you um, ever get? Uh, he won't leave me alone. He's eating so slow. He just wanted to come out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What would the name be? I'm sorry. Uh, C- Caleb. Caleb. I'm sorry, Caleb. Oh. He wants me to go. Come on, Carla. Come on. Come on back. Come on back to the truck. Come on back to the truck with the big, <laughs> the raised truck with the big old wheels. Uh, so, Your wife is not no. a lot lizard. How dare you? I know. Now I have to. Uh, no, that'd be a big 18 wheel truck. I'm talking about a pickup truck with oh, big gotcha. old tires. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. Maybe you uh, do it. <laughs> summer is over and it's back to the grind. Establishing a consistent bedtime <laughs> and wake time routine is key. 
because quality sleep helps boost energy recovery and well-being. Sleepers who use their Sleep Number 360 smart bed features and Sleep IQ technology get almost 100 hours more of quality sleep per year. Here's a fun fact. Over 33% of Sleep IQ sleepers have a preferred sleep number setting of 35, 40, or 45. That's softer than the one I use. I use anywhere between a 65 and maybe sometimes an 85 if I really want to make my uh, back recover. But remember, it's completely adjustable to you. Don't forget, children need quality sleep just as much as you do. Yeah, Kids need sleep to help them be happy, healthy, and productive in school, at home, and during after-school activities. Sleep IQ technology shows your ideal sleep-wake schedule and the best times for working out and winding down. It improves your bedtime and wake time consistency. So... Go to bed, wake up at the same time, even on weekends, dim the lights, bright lights keep the body alert, and keep a nighttime room temperature of 65 to 67 degrees, which is ideal for quality sleep. Get a sleep number bed. I wouldn't sleep on anything else. Great day. A great day starts the night before. My sleep number setting is now a 75. Carla is holding steady. Uh, at a, No, Carla's, I think, at a 70 now. It's time to discover the sleep number 360 smart bed right now. You can enjoy special offers, but only for a limited time only at Sleep Number stores or at sleepnumber.com slash TMOS. That's sleepnumber.com slash TMOS. <laughs> he didn't get enough sleep last night. Thank mm. you very much. Let's open up the uh, thing after yeah. that. Turn it. Six page. Oh. All right. Uh, take I it away, Rob. I never in my life felt oh. as happy as this. Now, this is uh, an unmitigated incontrovertible, uncompromising feeling of ecstasy. That is the Squire Jack Ken Cook after he watched the movie Caligula. <laughs> he loved it that much. <laughs> he loved it. Went to see it at the Biograph in Georgetown. <laughs> the <Fantastic> Biograph! <laughs> yes, the <laughs> Biograph. That's where right it ran for months <laughs> down there at the Biograph Quick in right Georgetown. Turn. Now, this mm-hmm. is no secret to anyone who has listened to the show for a while. I am not a fan of the Family Guy. I think they take the cheap joke too often. I just don't... It's never really appealed to me. However... That's I don't know it. it. I don't. I don't watch it. It's wonderful. It. It, uh, wonderful is it's probably be- not beloved. the best word. It, well, beloved maybe. It's a pop culture icon, yeah, my, like iconic series. The simple. I don't it's loved by the arguing. simple. I don't want to make this all about arguing, but how can you say the cheap joke when you talk about the Marx Brothers, who are the ultimate cheap joke? You made guys? a fresh in what way? joke. Just making hack jokes about a fat lady in front of a stove. Mike, you don't think that is a cheap? You don't think that saying, "Hey, now I can't even see the stove." Yeah, but, but that's you know what? A hundred years ago, a hundred years ago, it might have been a different comedic landscape than yeah, right now. Okay, I'll give we you that. We live right, I in twenty twenty one. I wish you didn't. let it go. All right, so <laughs> I wish you didn't. I wish you didn't. But anyway, Jesus. I and with a hundred years ago, no one cares. You want to talk about not caring? The thing is, is he asked me a question, I answered it. I'm just saying. Okay. The Marx, I'm just saying. The Marx Marx Brothers, Brothers are. Well, now you're now you're <laughs> you stop it, boys boys stop this it. is the, this, this is, is the, your the comedy, comedy genius, genius. Look at right this. look at this the wit we've got all right we've got a, what's the next god thing? damn your, right the, i feel like i'm in all right. kindergarten class i don't right care now. for the, the family guy as a rule but i appreciate the fact that they did this <laughs> and the way they did it is they took their buffoonish lead character peter griffin and made him an idiot is that the guy who talks like that? Exactly. Is that the father? Yeah. That's they, the father with Seth, uh, Seth McFa- whatever his name is. Seth MacFarlane. And MacFarlane, they, yeah. They use him as the stooge, so to speak, for a COVID PSA. And hey, Johnny. I, hey, Johnny. Johnny, how are you? I'm recovered. I got all my stuffing back. <laughs> I'm just busting your balls. I thought it'd be funny if you thought I was that word. My okay. mom doesn't. Want anyway, I I appreciate the fact that they did this PSA it was trending yesterday. As of now, billions of COVID vaccines have been administered safely to people around the world. All right. Well, what Peter might ask is, what if the vaccine makes him sick? The common side effects from the COVID vaccines are generally mild and last a few days. But do you know what can have serious long-term side effects? COVID. Well, you know, he also says he just figures everyone else is going to get it. So why does he have to? Well, what he should understand is that getting the shot not only protects him, but also the people around him. But even more importantly, if the virus is allowed to spread through an unvaccinated population, it could mutate into a variant that the vaccines might not protect against. And then we're right back where we started. Gal Gadot singing Imagine. We cannot let that happen. Well, you know, I just realized this is like one of those schoolhouse rocks. Except, you know, without the rock. Yeah, it's like school. Way to end strong, Brian. So get get your shots, folks. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I don't know if it's been said before. If it has, shut me down right away. All right, I'm I'm walking out. Got my flu shot today. Uh, Gwen Good. got the flu yeah. shot at the uh, drugstore uh, and uh, CVS. Yep. No problem. Shoe fly. Boom, bam. Went in there. Got it. Can't, coming out. I'm saying, how many more would we have been able to get out to the American people if we didn't call it the COVID vaccine and if we said, did you get your COVID shot? Maybe did you get your COVID shot. Get Maybe. Your COVID shot. Yeah. We called it the vaccine. I think the vaccine for some people has a little stigma to it. Just a thought. Not an opinion. Bad marketing. Not an opi- just an opinion, not a thought. We get, just whatever. We get our you. dogs yes. vaccinated all the time. Get your COVID shot. COVID Jeez. shot. Change COVID it from shot. vaccine to shot. Come on now. COVID you shot. You shot yet? You get your shot. There was a guy, uh, you know, that uh, was a Florida man who was getting <laughs> his uh, his vaccine today. And you could hear him everywhere. It's like, hey, man, I, man, I didn't think I needed it, but I got to go travel about it. And he got his shot. And I said, way to go. Gave him a thumbs up. And he, he smiled and he showed no teeth. He had two missing. Okay. Well, that's, you know what? Why can't you focus on the 30 that he has? <laughs> Absolutely. You're such Amen. a pessimist. You way say your computers don't listen to you. Why in God's name, after we talked about this just last week, on my YouTube page, when I open it up, there's a commercial from the 1970s featuring a popular diet candy. Now, this is from 30, 40 years ago, and uh, I think the writing is particularly odd considering what we know now. This was an actual commercial from the 1970s. I was overweight and looked terrible, but AIDS helped me lose 46 pounds. The AIDS diet plan helped me lose 28 pounds. AIDS helps control your appetite so you lose weight, yet AIDS lets you taste, chew, and enjoy. And the appetite suppressant in AIDS is not a stimulant. AIDS helped me to lose 18 pounds, and it doesn't contain anything to make me nervous. Question, why take diet pills when you can enjoy AIDS? AIDS helps you lose weight without making you jittery. It was a diet candy, Mike. It was an appetite suppressant. (laughs) It It was spelled A-Y-D-S. That's uncut, and that is amazing. Right? It is amazing, and I think enough time has passed, uh, and we, thank God, have gotten a lot of that under control, mm-hmm. but not totally. Uh, that's just stunning, the way when you look at that. It's hard to uh, not take a look at that from a comedic just, standpoint. Yeah, to fathom that that, that happened. But anyway, uh, it was just odd to me that we mentioned it, I think, a week, a week and a half ago, AIDS Diet Candy, mm-hmm. and it popped up on my feed. So i just like to share. And I closed mm-hmm. with They're this. They're listening. I listen. I closed with this from uh, YouTube, Mike. Sometimes grannies are wonderful, sweet women. They really can be. Very yep. nice. But sometimes granny is sitting on the porch with her iPad, and when you greet her, you get this. Good morning, granny. Good morning. Chilly today. By saying good morning doesn't mean I want you to have a conversation with me. <laughs> so granny does wow. not want to talk. That's, wow. that's, that's <laughs> your digital send me dumpster. That. Send me that, Excuse would you please? Me. I'd like to end the show with that. That would be That uh, grandmother wonderful. loved the Marx Brothers. That was a very interesting show today. I don't know what happened. I'll maybe think about it later. Uh, but I sure enjoyed it. I hope you did, too. We're going to be back tomorrow with a brand new episode for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. I'm going to go get a cold shower. Please. This is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. We don't want you to lose weight. We don't want you to lose weight. We just want you to be healthy. Okay. You know, by, by eating less. Go home and step on a scale and write down how much you weigh and subtract it by like 20. 20. And then weigh that much. If that's a joke, I love it. If not, I cannot wait to unpack that with you. Who did they go to war with? The world. Yeah.